We knew Tennessee was going to be good last year, but I don't know if anyone knew they were going to be that good. The Volunteers were a win against South Carolina away from making the college football playoff and ultimately finished the year at 11-2 with an Orange Bowl victory over Clemson. So now, heading into 2023, it's time to see what the Volunteers can do for an encore. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today as we break down everything you need to know about Tennessee football heading into this upcoming college football season. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com, some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country, beating out over 80% of the national analysts each of the last five years. Do not miss out on that guy. It's guaranteed money right back in your pocket with a guaranteed winning season every single year. Check out our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year round. Become a member of our Patreon wall of fame. The content will only be posted to Patreon, not here on YouTube. And also send us some gear. Send us some gear to be displayed in every single Gridiron Expert video as we continue to expand our GE Nation from coast to coast. Would love to get some Tennessee gear as we try to expand our SEC collection a little bit more. So let's talk some Tennessee football, guys. I mean, I love this team. I love what Josh Heupel's doing in Knoxville. And we said last year, you know, we knew they were going to be good. And I think a lot of people thought, okay, maybe maybe nine wins. Maybe could flirt with ten. But I don't know if anyone thought that at one point in time that the Volunteers would be the number one team in the country. Keep in mind, they were number one heading into that game against Georgia in Athens. Lost to Georgia by 14, got blown out against South Carolina. Had they defeated South Carolina or defeated Georgia one way or another, they would have been in that Final Four. They would have been in the college football playoff. And I don't know if anyone thought they'd be that good. You take a look at them this year, good enough to maybe make the playoff. Good enough to threaten Georgia for the SEC East crown. The offense is loaded despite the loss of Hendon Hooker, who threw over 3,100 yards and 27 touchdowns last year. Joe Milton steps in, was phenomenal against Vanderbilt, was phenomenal against Clemson in the Orange Bowl, arguably has the strongest arm in all of college football, one of the strongest arms maybe ever, threw for 971 yards and 10 touchdowns last year with zero interceptions, so just like Hendon Hooker, doing a phenomenal job of taking care of the football. The Volunteers averaged over 520 yards per game last year. Milton as that quarterback, Jalen Wright and Jabari Small both return at running back after each rushing for over 700 yards last year, combining for 23 touchdowns. They do lose Jalen Hyatt, their star wide receiver, but Brew McCoy is back. Squirrel White is back. The Volunteers offensively, with Josh Heupel, you know, leading this team as head coach, they're going to be just fine offensively. I don't think they're going to take a major step back or anything like that. Still are going to average well over 40 points per game, just like they did last year. Defensively, you know, we put so much focus on Tennessee's offense last year. I don't think we realized how solid Tennessee's defense was. This defense last year gave up just 22.8 points per game. That's it. They gave up just 116 rushing yards per game. The defense passing-wise, though, was no good. 290 passing yards per game. So points per game-wise, very, very good. Rushing defense, very good. Secondary, yeah, it needs some work. Needed some work, still does need some work. Their top two tacklers are back there. Aaron Beasley is back. Jalen McCullough are back. And the secondary, a lot better, a lot more experienced. This defense as a whole should improve. And that's a scary thought considering how good they were last year. I just don't think we talked about it nearly enough because our main focus was on Hendon Hooker and that offense. But you take a look at Tennessee now, heading into 2023. The schedule lines up great for them. Only a handful of legitimately tough, tough games. Uh, and I can tell you that right now, those tough games are not coming in the first two weeks. They should steamroll Virginia, arguably the worst team in the ACC heading into this year. Average only 17 points per game last year. Tennessee already a 28-point favorite heading into that game in Nashville. They'll destroy Austin P. They're 2-0. Should be a top 10, top 12 team heading into their road game at Florida. A couple weeks ago, Joe Milton came out and said, I don't lose in Florida. I don't lose in Florida. And he's right. He's not going to lose in Florida. You know, they, they won the Orange Bowl last year in Florida, and they're going to win in Gainesville. They're going to take down their rival in the Gators. They beat Florida last year 38-33. to They have not won back-to-back -back games against their rivals since 2003 and 2004. They've actually lost nine straight games in the Swamp to go along with that. But here's the thing. I don't have a lot of faith in Florida this year. I, I'm not a hater. I have nothing against the Gators. But I look at Florida and I say, 
where, where's the offense? Where's this capability to keep up with Tennessee? It's not there. I don't have faith in Graham Mertz being able to lead this offense in the passing game. Uh, I don't have faith in Florida, who averaged over 200 rushing yards per game last year, to torch Tennessee on the ground because Tennessee's rushing defense was solid last year, has a chance to be even better this year. Yes, the Gators have home field advantage. It's not going to be easy. I don't think Tennessee steamrolls Florida or anything like that, but I do think they beat the Gators in what's going to be a, another rough year under Billy Napier Florida can maybe turn the corner next year. It's not going to happen this year. Tennessee gets the win over the rival. They're 3-0. and I think they beat UTSA to be 4-0, and although that should be a game that Tennessee does not overlook. Honestly, that game against UTSA will be the toughest offense they face to that point. That UTSA offense will be better than Florida, Austin P, or Virginia. So really the first true offensive test, first true test of that Tennessee defense coming against the Roadrunners on September 23rd. That game might be closer for a while that people realize, but Tennessee, ultimately the better team, clearly will get that win. They're 4-0, and oh, and then they play South Carolina. South Carolina at home. So uh, I, I'm sorry if, if, if you're a uh, South Carolina fan. I think this one actually could get ugly rather quickly. Talk about a revenge game. I mean, South Carolina was torching Tennessee last year before Hendon Hooker went down with that injury. So we can't say, oh, Tennessee would have won had Hinton Hooker not gotten hurt. I, I don't necessarily believe that by any means. But it was ugly. 63 to 38. That was the final score in Columbia last year. South Carolina destroying Tennessee, putting up 606 yards on the Tennessee defense and ending the Volunteers' college football playoff hopes. But now the game is in Knoxville. And while a handful of those Tennessee players are gone from last year, a lot of those players are back. They are not going to forget what happened in Columbia last year. They want revenge over the Gamecocks, and they're going to get it in a big way. South Carolina doing phenomenal things under Shane Beamer. I love what he's doing with this program. Spencer Rattler returns. He had over 450 passing yards against Tennessee last year. And if the secondary for Tennessee hasn't improved drastically, he'll put up some really great numbers once again. But I don't have faith in the South Carolina defense to get the stop. I think it was one of those things where, like, Joe Milton was certainly more than capable of winning a game, but getting thrust into the action in a game where Tennessee was getting beat pretty bad already, uh, it kind of threw everything off, and Tennessee was never ever fully to recover. So Tennessee wins big over South Carolina in a massive revenge game from last year, and they head into their early bye week, first week of October, at 5-0, and oh, and will be, in my eyes, a top-10 team when they take on Texas A&M on October 14th. Uh, I love this matchup. I love it for a lot of different reasons. I love I love the two teams this year, but I also love because we don't see it very often. It's a cross-division game, just the third meeting between Tennessee and Texas A&M since the Aggies joined the SEC. And to me, this lines up perfectly for the Volunteers. They should win this game if they don't overlook A&M in preparation for Alabama. And I don't think Josh Heupel allows that to happen, right? Uh, because A&M's no slouch. Uh, last year, they kind of were, only, only five and seven. But this year, they have 20 starters back, a new offensive coordinator, Bobby Petrino. The offense is going to be drastically better. Connor Weidman looks great. The top four pass catches are back. The defense is very, very solid and loaded. They were pretty good last year. going to be great again this year. You know, they're no slouch. a and is going to have a major bounce back season. Tennessee gets them at a perfect time, though. Why? Tennessee's coming off that bye week, so they're well-rested. And a and ms coming off their game against Alabama. So a and either going to have a massive Bama hangover from a heartbreaking home loss in College Station, or they're going to be riding that high from a win over Alabama and maybe get caught with a major letdown game on the road at Tennessee. And obviously, we know Knoxville, Neyland Stadium, not an easy place to play by any means. I think Tennessee does beat Texas A&M here. I think the defense for Tennessee steps up in a very big way to shut down this electric A&M offense. And the Volunteers are 6-0 and heading into the road game at Alabama. This is a revenge game for the Crimson Tide, certainly. Last year, it was the game of the year, right? Unbelievable matchup. Tennessee beating Alabama in Knoxville, 52-49. to It was an unbelievable game, hitting that field goal as time expired to beat Alabama, finally snapping that streak. But look at the game this year. Tuscaloosa, we know, is not an easy place to play, one of the toughest places to play in the country. Alabama has lost eight home games under Nick Saban. Eight home games since 2007. Three of those eight losses came in 2007. So they've lost five home games under Nick Saban since 2008. That's a scary thing to think about. Tennessee has lost nine trips 
last nine trips they have lost to Alabama by an average of 20.9 points per game. So they've lost the last nine trips by about three touchdowns on average. I don't think that's the case this year. I don't think they're going to lose by three touchdowns. This game's going to be very, very close. And Tennessee has a fantastic shot to win this game if Alabama is still struggling at the quarterback position. We don't know who it's going to be. Tyler Buckner in from Notre Dame, Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson. We're not exactly sure, uh, but I do more than anything have more faith in Alabama's defense than anything else. And that to me is a difference maker. Having the home crowd on their side in a revenge game where they're going to want to beat their rival third Saturday in October with that stingy defense where their strength is going to be their secondary I think Alabama shuts down the Tennessee passing attack. They shut down Joe Milton. They can, they're able to stop the run. It's very difficult to have a very successful day on the ground against the Crimson Tide. It can happen. It happened a couple times last year, but it's going to be tough. Alabama and a revenge game is never a position you want to find yourself in, and I think the Crimson Tide do get themselves a win here, but it is close. They've lost the last nine by 20.9 points per game. They're going to lose the last 10 in Tuscaloosa, but it's going to be, I believe, a one-score game. Tennessee comes back to take on Kentucky. What a great spot, right? I mean, historically, you know, you're, you're, you're great here. Someone's like, well, what about the Alabama hangover? Well, at least you're playing Kentucky, right? And no disrespect to the Wildcats, but my God, Tennessee owns Kentucky, right? They won 44-6 to last year over the Wildcats. Just an absolute annihilation. Won eight of the last 10 against Kentucky. They own the series edge, 83-26-9. to 83 wins, 26 losses all time against Kentucky. Look, the Wildcats are good. They return 10 stars offensively. Devin Leary's coming in at quarterback. They're going to be much improved offensively after a very disappointing season last year. But they're not. Tennessee is not losing this game despite the game being on the road against Kentucky. I just don't see it happening. I mean, when in doubt, Tennessee, Kentucky, you pick the Volunteers. Every now and then the Wildcats get a win, but it's very few and far between. So Tennessee does beat the Wildcats. They will beat UConn. Not much to talk about there. Then they go on the road to take on Missouri. It's a win. It's a win. Right? I mean, they had 724 yards of offense against the Tigers last year. Missouri's defense is really, really good. And it's a trap game, certainly, for Tennessee because they're still in the college football playoff hunt. They're still in the SEC championship hunt. They're going on the road to a Missouri team that has a really, really good defense. Ten of their top 13 tacklers returning. A dual threat quarterback in Brady Cook. Home field advantage. A team that this is arguably Eli Drinkwitz's best team yet since he arrived at Missouri. And you can see Tennessee maybe overlooking the Tigers, a team they beat 66-24 to last year. Looking ahead to Georgia, that is the Super Bowl, right? That is the one that could sh you know, shake up the college football landscape. A revenge game for Tennessee, an opportunity to clinch the SEC East possibly. That won't matter if they don't beat Missouri. I think they do, but they've got to be cautious. Got to be very, very cautious here. But right now, I think the Missouri offense, to me, still has too many question marks. They've been wildly inconsistent throughout the Drinkwitz era. Should be the best one they've had yet, especially with the new offensive coordinator. Don't think it's going to be enough to hang with the Volunteers. So Tennessee wins that game. They are 9-1, and one, two games left, and it's the game against Georgia that's going to decide it all. You beat Georgia, you probably win the East, you win that, college football playoff possibly, if you can win the SC Championship. You lose, probably another New Year's Six Bowl game, which is still nothing to be upset about at all. The Georgia game is exciting, though, guys. Last year, you know, Tennessee taking the number one spot in the college football playoff rankings, going to Athens. It was the Tennessee offense versus the Georgia defense. What was going to happen? The Georgia defense won that bat battle. Had that Tennessee offense. It was so good. Over 500 yards per game. Held them to 289 yards on the day. Beat them 27 to 13. It's the same storyline here, right? Tennessee's electric offense versus Georgia's stingy defense. Who's going to win that battle? We know Neyland Stadium is going to be rocking. If this game does pan out with an undefeated Georgia coming to a one-loss Tennessee, my God, it's going to be the atmosphere of the year. Just like I think last year, the atmosphere of the year was in Knoxville with Tennessee played Alabama. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And you love it being this late in the year. So many implications. But I don't know if anybody's beating Georgia this year. This team is loaded. They're loaded at the running back position. They're loaded at wide receiver and tight end. Carson Beck has looked phenomenal. A lot of hype surrounding what we've seen from him. He looks great. The defense, stingy, dangerous, electric, per usual. And I think they're going to have enough to slow down this Tennessee offense. I think it's close. I think it's a one-possession game. I think Tennessee plays their two biggest games, Alabama and Georgia. I think they play them both within one possession. They're going to both be narrow games. I don't see anybody just wiping the floor with Tennessee this year. Not a chance. But I don't think that Georgia loses this game. I think they can overcome Neyland Stadium. Don't think it happens. I don't think lightning strikes twice where Tennessee wins their biggest game at home two years in a row. I'd love to see it. 
Just don't see it happening. They dropped the game to Georgia. They obviously will beat Vanderbilt. They've won four straight games. They beat the Commodores 56 to nothing last year. I think Vandy probably gets a touchdown this year, maybe 10 points if they're lucky, but they're not losing. Tennessee's not. The Volunteers finished the year at 10 and 2, the exact same record they had last year. And some Volunteer fans would be upset with that. They go, oh my God. Why? We were so close to, you know, last year the college football playoff and we missed out. This year comes down to that Georgia game. We win that. We, we win the SEC East. More than likely, we're so close and they're going to fall just short unless Georgia just falls apart and we don't see that happening. 10-2 and two, still going to get the Volunteers to a New Year's Six Bowl game. And that is nothing to be ashamed about. Back-to-back 10-win -back seasons, that's unbelievable. Something that a few years ago probably many thought wasn't possible. Josh Heupel is doing phenomenal, phenomenal things in Knoxville this year as an encore. It's going to be amazing. And again, they're one upset win away over Georgia or Alabama to possibly playing for an SEC title in a college football playoff first. It's not out of the realm of possibility. We think they fall just short. But regardless, another fantastic, successful, and wildly entertaining year for the Tennessee Volunteers. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below, including our expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com, our Patreon account for exclusive college football content year-round, and send us some gear to the mailing address below. Send us some of your best Rocky Top gear to put on our Gridiron Expert display in every single video. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah!